distinct patterns of play going forward were visible in the first game under Ange Postacoglu. One of the first patterns involves the winger coming inside in between the lines to receive possession from midfield. By doing so, he draws the opposition fullback out of position and opens up space for the overlapping Australian fullback. In this example against South Africa, we see the central midfielder Mark Milligan passing vertically to winger Matthew Leckie. Leckie's movement coming short towards the ball drew his opponent out of position and the ball was quickly played to the overlapping Ivan Franjic, who was exploiting this space in behind. Leckie's got it, and Franjic is clear of the fullback. This movement also played a crucial role in two Socceroos goals, the first of which, which was Tim Cahill's equaliser against South Africa. Another vertical pass was played from midfield into the feet of winger Tommy Orr, who had dropped short. Orr's movement drew a defender out of position and the ball was quickly played to Jason Davidson, whose cross found Cahill at the back post. Also, in amongst the hysteric celebrations following Cahill's wonder goal against the Netherlands, it was easy to forget that it was this pattern that played a crucial role in build-up. Winger Matthew Leckie drew left wing-back Daly Blind out of position and opened up space for right full-back Ryan McGowan to advance. McGowan's first time cross to the back post found Cahill and what happened next was unforgettable. Save of the moment, Australia. The second pattern is a variation on the first one, with the same off-the-ball movements. Only this time the ball is played directly out to the overlapping fullback. This pattern played a prominent role during Australia's friendly against Croatia prior to the World Cup where midfielders Mark Milligan and Mila Jedinak frequently played long diagonal passes out to fullbacks Jason Davidson and Ivan Franjic. Just stumbling at the crucial moment. So, uh, Liverpool also said to be keen to acquire his signature. Jason Davidson showing a good example of this pattern also came against Belgium where left winger Tommy Orr moved inside to try and receive possession, doing so dragging his opponent out of position. Mark Milligan was then able to pass first time out to Jason Davidson in space. The third pattern visible during the early stages of Postacoglu's reign added some variety. Instead of always looking to play the ball out to the fullbacks, on occasion the wing winger dropping short would look to bounce the ball inside to the number nine or to the advanced midfielder. As soon as the ball was bounced inside, Australia's wingers would run in behind to look for the return ball. This gave the Australian attack an added element of unpredictability and no side would just be able to block up the ball out wide. It also played a role in Australia's first ever open play shot under Postacoglu, with Dario Vitisic playing a 1-2 with striker Matthew Leckie while opposite winger Robbie Cruz looked to burst in behind. Now Neil, Yedinak. A bit congested, but uh, they work it well, Australia. Now Dario Vitisic racing onto the through ball. Recently, Postacoglu has decided to change to a 4-3-3 formation. This has brought about new patterns of play, one of which revolve around the rotation of the two advanced midfielders, the two fullbacks, and the two wingers. If a midfielder drops deep, such as here with James Troisi against Qatar, the nearest winger will move inside and the fullback will advance up the pitch. The aim of this is to drag opposition players out of shape and to open up space to pass into. In this example, James Troisi draws the Qatari right winger and opens up space for Aziz Bayic to receive. As the play progresses and Australia move the ball back to the left side of the pitch, a similar rotation between the winger, fullback and a central midfielder is visible. Wilkinson. The next rotation involves the winger and the midfielder swapping positions, causing confusion for the opposition's fullback and midfielder. Should they stay with their man or should they stay in their zone? But otherwise, given everything, I think they're going all right. The next example sees Massimo Luongo rotate with right winger Robbie Cruz, and the UAE midfielder opts to follow Luongo into a wide area. But conversely, the UAE left back decides not to track Robbie Cruz into the middle. This leaves space for Cruz to receive the ball and switch the play. And then, perhaps crucially, Japan away in Osaka next month. 
The final pattern in the 4-3-3 involving the wingers, fullbacks and midfielders begins when the wingers move out towards the touchline. This drags the opposition fullback out towards the touchline too and opens up space in between them and their central defender. When this happens, a midfielder looks to burst in behind into the space. Here Mark Milligan makes this run. These six patterns covered demonstrate Australia's evolution and the variety in their attack. But for now there is still a reliance on Tim Cahill up front. The Asian Cup will be a good test to see how far the side has further progressed under Postacoglu.